Hey everybody, this is the video that I am I assigned you Friday on what you need to know and understand about inequalities. Before I go any further, if you were taking the pretest and you knew very little or nothing on the inequalities, you need to go back and watch the video that's already posted on the video resources page called Inequalities. It's only a few minutes long. Then come back to this one. If you had a pretty good idea of what they were or you think that you understood what they were, then continue watching this video and you should be good to go. Be prepared to know how this works on Monday. Inequalities are similar to equations. They are solved in almost identical ways in what you had already learned during the equations unit. Here are some basics from last year when you were in sixth grade. First, here's a review of the symbols which are also on your equation notes that you received a few weeks ago. Greater than is here, less than here, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. Whatever crocodile foolishness you learned in elementary school has to go away. The greater than gator doesn't always eat the smaller number. That breaks down with algebra. What you need to always pay attention to are the tips of the arrows, which I'm highlighting here. Greater than go the symbol or the arrow goes to the right, and with less than it goes to the left. With that, you're good to go. Here are a couple of examples from sixth grade type inequalities. You have two y is greater than eight. To solve for y, you divide each side by two. That gives you y is greater than four. On the second example, I have six t is less than or equal to 24. To solve for t, divide by six, you end up with t is less than or equal to four. Then, if you remember from sixth grade, you were asked to solve this on a number line, or at least show your solution. The one for this example is shown here. If y is greater than 4, it is shown with an empty, hollow circle with the arrow matching the direction of what the arrow looks like in the question. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's a full circle. And again, the arrow matches the direction from the question originally shown. Those are all review. Seventh grade inequalities work off the exact same concepts, except there are two-step questions like you had with, this should say equation, sorry about that. But anyway, um, so in this question, I've got 3y plus 12 is greater than or equal to 24. My first step is to get rid of the constant, which is 12. I added a negative 12 to both sides. That gave me 3y is greater than or equal to 12. Then I divide by 3 to get rid of the coefficient. That gives me y is greater than or equal to 4. And then that is shown over here on my number line. This is no different than two-step equations. If I had put an equal sign here, it would have been exactly the same as what you would have before. Here's another example. 4 times the quantity 2y minus 6 is less than or equal to 20. That becomes 8y minus 24 is less than or equal to 20. I then add 24 to both sides, giving me 8y is less than or equal to 44. I then divide by the coefficient of 8. That gives me y is greater, or I'm sorry, y is less than or equal to 5 and 4 eighths, which reduces to 5 and 1 half. That is shown here on the number line. This is the location of 5 and 1 half, and my arrow direction matches what's in the actual question itself. Again, every skill from the equations unit will transfer to this unit, but there is one extra thing. When you divide by a negative coefficient, only a negative coefficient, the direction of the symbol reverses direction. Here is an example of that. Negative 6p is less than or equal to 18. I still answer the same way by dividing each side by negative 6, but my symbol e changed direction from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to negative 3. Negative 3 is shown here on the number line, it is a full circle, now going to the right to match the new direction of the symbol. Why? Because I said so, and because it does. No, there is an actual reason. 
The reason comes from an understanding of how the value of numbers work on number lines. On this number line, what I've shown is just a negative 6 through positive 6. Remember that the further away a number is from 0 on the positive side of a number line, the greater its value. But on the left side of 0, however, the further away a number is from 0, the less its value. 5 is more than 2. Well, that's a no-brainer. But if I put negative 5 and negative 1 on over here, it's understood that the negative 1 is worth more than the negative 5. So, with inequalities, when dividing by a negative coefficient, the symbol has to change direction because the value of your solution must match. And what that means is, in this example, negative 3y minus 12 is greater than or equal to 24. I solve normally by adding 12 to both sides. That gives me negative 3y is greater than or equal to 36. But see here how I'm dividing by negative 3? That's going to change my arrow direction to y is less than or equal to negative 12. That is shown here. The reason is because if I'm dividing by a negative number, that means that all of my answers have to start with less, all of my answers or possible answers have to be smaller because when you go left on a number line, the values change. Otherwise, I'm saying that negatives numbers, if I didn't change this, this right here, is more valuable than positive answers. And I don't know about you, but I would rather, for example, have $3 than to owe someone $3. Think about it. If you divide by a negative number, its value becomes smaller. The further away it goes left on a number line. Ask questions in class? We'll practice this more. Thanks.